Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to be redoing the Western Digital TV Live Media Player Review. This is the third generation. The reason I'm redoing it is because the first time I did a review on this, I was kind of inexperienced. I didn't show enough features like network playback and Hulu and all that stuff. I'm not satisfied with the video, so I'm redoing the review because it's extremely popular. So let's start with the contents of the box. First, you get the audio video composite wires, which I never use because I have an HDMI cord hooked up to my TV. A quick start guide and you get a whole bunch of other warranty pamphlets which I'm not going to go through. The media player itself, uh, this is the box, it might look different depending on where you live. And of course the AC adapter for power. You also get a remote with two batteries in the box. Now let's start with the remote design. Uh, the texture in the back is very soft, very comfortable, very easy to hold. The remote looks intimidating, but most of the time you'll only use the multicolored buttons and upward, this, this half of the remote. As for the design of the unit itself, it's very compact. As you can see, if you compare it to my cell phone, which is a Nexus 4, it shows you just how small this unit is. On the top, you have HDMI, DTS, Dolby Digital logo, all that good stuff. Uh, you have this is where the remote sensor is and the LED notification that shows that the unit has been powered on. Now, if you plan to plug this into a power bar, every time the power bar is off, obviously this unit would turn off. Every time you switch the power bar on, this unit would automatically turn on. So if you plan to plug this into a power bar, it's going to be extremely annoying. You also have a, the first USB port at the front. On the left, you have nothing. On the back, you have the uh, AC adapter for power, digital optical audio output, uh, internet port for wired internet, HDMI output, the second USB port if you want to plug in a keyboard or something, and yes, wireless keyboards work just fine. Um, and audio video composite output. On the left you have nothing, on the bottom you have a very hidden reset button right over there. Um, you have a serial number, model number, and brackets for wall mounting like this way or this way. As for Wi-Fi, there is built-in Wi-Fi. I am not going to be going over how powerful the signal is because it depends on too many variables. It depends on how strong is your router, how far is the media player from your router, how many walls are in between, stuff like that. So if you were to ask me how strong is the Wi-Fi signal in it, it's impossible to answer because it depends on your own uh, living space, okay? All right, so for those of you that are curious as to which uh, file types and codecs this media player supports, uh, I'll put a list in the description below. Just expand the description below and there you'll find uh, a list of a whole bunch of different codecs that are supported. That is the official list from Western Digital, okay? And um, you'll also note that if you expand the description below, there'll be a link to a new Western Digital Media Player review. Um, that's because in 2013, well, this year, Western Digital released a new uh, media player. It's called the TV Play. Not the TV Live, it's called the TV Play. Um, I did a review on that media player and also compare this current Western Digital TV Live media player up against the TV Play. Now you'll know that the interface itself is pretty nice, it's uh, very welcoming. Uh, this is the default wallpaper. You can put your own wallpaper. Um, if you plug in a USB stick and then you go through the menu settings, uh, you get to put a picture on a USB stick. I'm going to go through the setup menu. I'm going to go through this very quickly. I'm not going to go through everything actually. You can pause the video at any point to see any of this stuff because honestly it's it's all very boring generics. To show you the chunk of it, you can basically filter a USB stick through simply photos, just music, just videos, or if you go over to files, it'll show you everything on your USB stick. Now, it is possible to hook up an external hard drive. Um, my 1.5 terabyte external hard drive works just fine on this media player. However, the largest hard drive I've hooked up to this media player is 4 terabytes. And it, it just couldn't handle it. Uh, to show you the important stuff, well, here's an RS feed, if you know, if you have like a link. Uh, services is basically a chunk of apps. Um, let me just go to all. This is currently everything I have. Depending on where you live, this list will be different, you know, depending on your region. You can pause the video at any point and see if you recognize an app maybe you're interested in. I'm going to go through the most important ones, which is Hulu, Netflix, and YouTube. This is this is the main chunk of the Hulu app. Uh, you have like a search feature, you can go to most popular. See, right now I just pressed right and it lagged on me. Um, recently add, you can see your profile, stuff you subscribe to, stuff like that. And also you'll notice that my current video is playing in the background here. Uh, so I just simply press the option button. It'll like go to full screen mode. And yes, it does stream HD content if if it's provided on Hulu Plus, of course. Hulu must provide that service for the, the show, whatever you're watching. Uh, fast forwarding is pretty quick for the most part, but it also depends on your internet connection. I have a wired internet. As you can see, it's able to keep with me, up with me just fine. It's really quick at fast forwarding. 
and this is streaming HD right now. Uh, what I noticed about Hulu Plus is that it streams HD right off the bat if the show is available in HD. Uh, the Netflix experience is even more laggy than the Hulu experience. Hulu is somewhat decent. Uh, Netflix is just a lag fest. Right now I'm pressing the right button like crazy. Let me see if I can show you guys. Um, it's okay to keep up right now. Sometimes it just won't like respond at all. It just it's like a lag fest basically. Uh, so let's just try playing something. Okay, so the thing about Netflix Payback is when I start a video for the first time or after I've just finished fast forwarding a video, uh, I notice that the picture is very grainy for the first like five seconds or so, and after five seconds the picture turns extremely clear. Maybe because it takes time for it to connect to the Netflix server or something. And fast forwarding you have one, two, and three X. Uh, it does an okay job of fast forwarding and then once it needs to play when you press play it, it takes a few seconds for it to start resuming but it does a pretty good job so while the video is playing Netflix is okay right, here's the weird thing about YouTube it comes with two YouTube apps the one I selected right now is a black and white logo is the modified version by Western Digital it's very clean it's fast uh, it's nice to use then you also have the Google design version which is YouTube lean back some people might know what that is it's it's laggy, it's slow, it's it's a horrible experience. I always use the the Western Digital modified version, which is this. It's clean, it's pretty basic, you know, you can also log in, of course, see most popular top favorites, uh, featured, stuff like that. Alright, so this is what I was talking about, the um, remote keyboard. Basically, say I want to type the letter B, it's out of focus. Say I want to type the letter B, I would have to press number two three times, right? One, two, three. And... Well, actually, it, it didn't do it properly. Yeah, the remote couldn't keep up, and instead it typed A. That's the thing about this media player. It's it's kind of slow and unresponsive random times. Not all the time, but random times, yeah, it's kind of slow. It can't keep up with my uh, commands. One, two, three. I have to do a little bit slower in order for it to keep up. This works fine for the modified version of the Western Digital um, YouTube app. But for apps like Netflix, you can't use it. Now the YouTube app does of course stream uh, YouTube content in HD. Um, once the video is up and running, it's pretty quick. As you can see, I'm fast forwarding it because the fast forward button only skips in 10 second intervals. Which is not bad. I, I personally don't mind it. It's okay. Um, the content is pretty clear for the most part. I have seen better from other media players. Um, the strange thing is, even though I don't like the YouTube Lean Back app, I noticed that video play streamed through that app plays better than the uh, Western Digital modified version, unfortunately. And of course you have other random stuff, I don't want to go into too much because I'll make this video way too long. And of course there are games, but don't get too excited. What basically happens is you must have an internet connection and you have two sections here. I'll go into fun spot just as an example, I'll show you what you get. So after about maybe 10 seconds of waiting time, this is what you get in fun spot. It's just very basic stuff like blackjack, chess. Um, 2D games basically and of course play jam is rel relatively the same it's just the interface looks a bit different but you're also just getting 2D games every single file type I could ever throw at this media player it runs it just fine MKV, MP4, uh, any H.264 Kodak it works great, DivX, everything pictures, MP3s, everything works excellent there's one exception which I'll get into later on um, the annoying thing is that when you plug in a USB stick, even like this one, it only has two files, it's a 4 gig stick, it takes almost about 10 seconds to compile all the content on the USB stick. That's because, as I said before, this media player is extremely laggy and slow. So can you imagine plugging in a 16 gig USB stick with a whole bunch of videos? It's going to take about a minute for it to compile everything and show you in a list. For the most part, playing content is pretty easy. You have a navigation bar at the bottom. Uh, if you press the options button, you can select a whole bunch of other stuff. It'll bring up a new menu like this. You can rate it and all that other good stuff. Of course, if you press the subtitle button, if subtitles are available, it'll you know show you subtitles. Fast forwarding. This is this is only a minute clip, and right now it's at 8x. Look how long it's taking to fast forward a one minute video. So it does fast forward, but when you're watching like a three hour video and you need to resume, if by some chance uh, the resume function didn't work for you or you lost it and you want to fast forward, it's really slow. So what the trick is to do is to press the fast forward button and while it's fast forwarding, press the next scene button. That way you can skip in 10 minute intervals in long videos. So most videos I, I'm able to play fine. Here's the exception I was telling you guys about. My camera, which is the Sony HX20V, I'll put a link to that video review in the description below. The quality is so high that this media player cannot play the video properly. Um, what basically happens is that, I'll put the sound up, it plays 
and then it goes slow motion. It can't play the quality properly. And then the audio just cuts out. It's like the media player just can't handle it. It just kind of gives up on me. Uh, so there's my cousin just jamming away. And what's going to happen after a few seconds is that it's just going to cut out audio. Uh, let's see if I can show you the display bar. There, after about 11 or 12 seconds, the audio just cuts out. So what that basically means is if you plan to watch an MKV 1080p movie that's 11 gigs, it runs just fine. If you're playing a video, which is like my home camera, and it has a playback of 26 megabytes per second, that quality is so high and the file is so huge that this media player cannot play it. Right now, this is hooked up to my PC. As you can see, these are my shared folders, these two right here. Press the red button on the remote. You got a whole bunch of options. Uh, local storage is of course your USB stick or, or external hard drive currently plugged in directly to the media player. Media server is uh, whatever shared through Windows Media Center. And network share is any publicly shared um, media content. So that could be MKV files, they work just fine. Sharing MKV files on your network works just great. Media Center is more exclusive to Windows Media Center, and Windows Media Center, for those you don't know, doesn't share MKV files. So you, you have a choice. You can practically share everything you want and stream it, and it works just fine. I'm not going to play anything because uh, there's no point. Uh, most of these are kind of private home family videos. I don't want to show you guys anything, but let me just show you that I do have access to everything. There you go. There is This is my current folder, um, everything that's shared. In fact, if I could, I would have showed you something here. This is the exact same uh, file I copied to my USB stick. Now, this time I'm streaming it off my uh, network. Working just fine. So if I go to a media server, for example, LG Nexus 4 is my phone. Uh, right now I'm using iMedia Share on my Nexus 4. That's like a DLNA app kind of thing. Um, as you can see, let's go to my videos. This is all stuff on my phone. Where the heck is my stuff, my personal stuff? Just show me, come on, hurry up. All right, so as you can see, these are videos actually from my phone. Um, they're, again, these are kind of private. I don't want to share with you guys. I wonder if I could play something. Okay, I'll, I'll play this. This is from uh, Las Vegas where two guys were dancing in the pool. I think they're on ecstasy or something. These guys are like blitzed out of their mind or something. It's pretty funny, but this is being streamed off my phone right now. All right, so one thing I can demonstrate for you guys is live TV because I don't have any of these devices. I don't have a sling player or anything like that, but yeah, the, this media player does support all these devices listed here. And also, I can't download and show you how to use themes. There are, there are actually downloadable themes through the setup menu, uh, which you can like change the navigation search bar or the navigation bar at the bottom, stuff like that. Now, in my previous video, last year, I gave this media player a four out of a five. I'm changing that because my standard has gone a lot better. I've gone through a lot more media players in that time. And this time I'm going to give it a 3 out of a 5, which might disappoint some people, but hear me out. Here's why. The pros of the device is that it's relatively attractive. As you can see, the menu and interface is pretty nice. Not only that, the interface is pretty easy to navigate. It's simple. Left and right, you select the menu and you're pretty much good to go. It plays most popular HD files. Not all, but most, as I mentioned. Uh, MKV, H.264 Kodak, MTS file formats, everything is good to go. It does support DLNA, uh, so you can stream stuff from your cell phone or tablet straight to your uh, media player over a Wi-Fi connection. It supports most streaming content like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, uh, all that good stuff. There is a Western Digital TV remote app available. I did not demonstrate it because the app is absolutely horrendous. It doesn't work half the time. Uh, but I have to mention it as a pro in case some people do want to use it. I just have to mention that as a pro. Uh, the physical design of the media player is very compact. Great network playback. Uh, almost everything you share on your network, it can be streamed on the media player. However, there are some cons. One con is, of course, the Western Digital TV remote app for iOS and Android. It's uh, Even though it's available, it's a horrendous experience. So it doesn't work that great. The remote keyboard here at the bottom doesn't work for half the apps like Netflix and all that other stuff, so it's kind of useless. I don't know why Western Digital even included it then if it's not going to work for most of their apps. There's no built-in web browser, so you can't even surf the web on this media player despite the ability to plug in a keyboard at the back if you want. You cannot download external apps. There's no Western Digital app store of any kind. If Western Digital releases a new firmware update and it includes a new app, good for you. 
but most of the time that does not happen and you don't even know which app you're going to end up getting unless Western Digital decides. Opening and closing apps on this device is a pretty horrendous experience. Take Netflix, which is one of the most popular streaming services available. It takes between 40 to 60 seconds to open that app just to open it. I have no idea why, but it takes forever and sometimes it's not responsive as I mentioned. You'll just keep navigating on your remote and sometimes it'll just freeze up or hiccup on you. Also opening Hulu, even though it might seem fast, I've used other media players where it opens 10 times faster. So even on this media player, Hulu Plus for example, still takes quite a bit of a while to open up. Generally speaking, the media player itself is really laggy. Right now, I see it froze on files, now it froze on setup, now it froze on music for some random reason, and I'm hammering away at the right button. It shouldn't be stopping, it should be non-stop, continuous, smooth. It just randomly wants to stop at random times for some strange reason, and it does that in some apps. Then there's an issue of it not being able to play my home videos, which play back at 25 megabytes per second. You might be wondering why that's a problem. Most people don't have a camera that high quality like me. 4K videos around the corner, even with H.265 coming out soon, it won't help that much. So that means that this media player isn't very future proof for upcoming HD videos that'll be just be even more and more and more sharper and clearer in image. So that's why I had to give this media player a lower score than before because it's okay but for today's standard it's kind of lacking. So that's my review. If you found this video useful check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.